I'm Dr. Sudha Menon and uh, she is Mrs. Rebecca Glory. Uh, we have decided to do, to do this uh, coursework, coursework in various sessions, keeping, keeping in mind the undergraduate and postgraduate students that we have been teaching for so many years. In our 30 years of teaching experience, we have encountered all types of students and many of them find it very difficult to construct even simple sentences. They may be very good in their subject matter, but they lose a large extent because of uh, the difficulty in constructing sentences. So these sessions are mainly uh, composed, keeping these students in mind. We have decided to start the sessions by talking about the structure of a simple sentence. How do we make a simple sentence? As we know that simple sentences with connectors um, help us uh, to convey the meaning whether it is in the spoken language or in the written language. So we start off our sessions by analyzing what are the various parts of a simple sentence. We know that you take up any grammar book, uh, you will find that uh, the simple sentence is generally divided into two parts. The two parts of a simple sentence are the subject part and the predicate part. And why do we take up simple sentences? Because uh, it is uh, the simple sentence is the group of words which conveys complete sense and in that manner a simple sentence uh, is largely different from a phrase or a clause, a dependent clause. We will discuss all these things in later sessions but to begin with we start discussing what is the structure of a simple sentence uh, and the main thing is we start with the subject part. As I already told you, a simple sentence is made up of the subject and the predicate and the, the subject part is rather complicated. You should clearly understand what is the subject of the sentence and what is the predicate of the sentence. Now, uh, the subject is largely made up of either a noun or a pronoun or a group of words that function as a noun. This the learner should keep very carefully in his mind, in his or her mind. Uh, the, the nouns, I mean, I'm sorry, the subjects are generally either nouns or pronouns or a group of words like a clause or a phrase that functions as a noun. So, I've already said that subject, I mean, sorry, sentences can be divided into subjects and predicates. Uh, the next thing that we have to remember is English has four types of sentences. What are the four types of sentences that we can have in English? The first sentence is called a declarative sentence. The second sentence is called an interrogative sentence. The third sentence is called an imperative sentence. And the fourth sentence type is the exclamatory sentence type. In all of these sentences, what happens? The position of the subject is slightly different. That we should clearly understand in the beginning. The declarative sentence, let's begin with the declarative sentence. Uh, let's check the board. Let's take an example of a declarative sentence. Uh, the first example is, Glory can bake cakes well. It is a statement made. Glory can bake cakes well. Now, the first thing we have to do when we get a sentence is identifying the verbs. What are the verbs in this sentence? The action word is baking. And she has the skill to bake cakes well. Glory. So, here what happens? The main verb is bake and the helping verb is can. Can bake. Main verb is bake and the helping verb is can. Now, who can bake cakes well? Glory. So, glory is the doer of the action. And in this sentence what happens? The subject is glory. Glory is the subject. The subject is followed by the verb complex. So this is the subject and then the whole thing is the predicate. So the predicate begins with the verbs, two types of verbs, the helping verb can and the main verb bake. And what follows is the object and complements and adverbs or adjectives or whatever it is. So what we get to know from this is generally in declarative sentences in English, the sentence starts with the subject. So what is the basic structure of a declarative sentence in English? The basic structure is subject, verb and object, S-V-O, subject, verb and object. Generally, 
the sentences start with the verb, I'm sorry, the subject and the subject is the doer of the action. In these sentences, the subject is the doer of the action. And suppose, suppose we have a passive sentence, then what happens? The position remains the same. It is the subject position. But the function that done by the subject actually changes. That we'll discuss later. If I talk about all these things now, it will be confusing you. So for now, we should know that generally the basic uh, sentence structure for declarative sentences is SVO and the sentences begin with the subject and the subject is generally the doer of the action. Let's take another example. Let's take another example. Adam played cricket. Adam played cricket. Here you don't have the helping verb. You have only one verb, the action word and that is played. That functions as the main verb. Played is the verb in the sentence. Now, who played again? Who is the doer of the action? It is Adam. Adam played cricket. So, Adam is functioning as the subject. Again, it's a statement. It's a declarative sentence. The sentence is beginning with the subject. And so, the word order is SVO. I think it's uh, getting clear for you now. The basic word order in declarative sentences is subject followed by the verb and the verb followed by the object, SVO. Now, the second type of sentence that we can have is the interrogative sentence. Interrogative, I-N-T-E-R-R-O-G-A-T-I-V. -E you should be very careful about the spellings when you are using the language. Interrogative sentences. What does interrogation mean? Questioning. Okay, so these are question forms. There are two types of questions in English. The first type of questions are the WH questions. WH questions. And the second type of questions are yes no questions. Yes no questions. Why are they called WH questions? They are called WH questions because these types of sentences, they begin with a WH word. What are the WH words you can have in English? The WH words you can have in English are what, where, when, why, who, how, etc. We can make so many questions with these types of sentences. What did you have for breakfast today? Where did you go yesterday instead of coming to college? When did we meet last time? Why did you laugh so much the other day? Who plucked all the apples from the tree? How did you write your exams? So you can form different types of questions with WH words and they are called WH questions. Now the next type of, type of uh, question, interrogative sentences is the yes no question type. They are called yes no questions because uh, the reply that you get for these type of questions is either yes or no. Either yes or no. Now take down a sentence. Did you have breakfast? Did you have breakfast? Did you have breakfast? So, in WH questions, what happens? The sentence begins with the WH word. Whereas in these type of questions, what happens? Without the WH word, the sentence begins with the helping verb. Did you have breakfast? So, this is the helping verb. This is your subject. You is the subject. Second person pronoun. Have is the main verb. Did you have breakfast? The sentence, what is happening? The action has taken place in the past okay did you that's why d is the did is the past tense form for the verb do this we discuss again when we are talking about verbs did you have breakfast so what is the position of the subject in interrogative sentences it is it's different from the position of the subjects in declarative sentences because in declarative sentences the subject comes in the first position in the uh, the wh question type what happens you have the wh word followed by 
the helping verb followed by the subject and then the main verb. Whereas in yes no questions what happens there is no wh word the sentence directly begins with the helping verb followed by the subject and the subject is again followed by the main verb. We can take up another example. Is she writing? Is she writing the examination? Is she writing the examination? This is again a yes no question. So the answer is either yes she is or you say no she isn't. Yes she is or no she isn't. No she isn't writing. She isn't. So what happens here again? Is is the helping verb and then writing is the main verb and the subject is she. So we have already discussed two types of uh, sentences that is the declarative sentence and the interrogative sentence where in declarative sentences the subject comes in the initial position and in interrogative, interrogative sentences what happens the subject is preceded by a wh word or a, and the helping verb uh, or it is just preceded by the helping verb. Imperative TIV imperative sentence. Imperative sentences are those sentences which either make a command or they give a request. They make commands or they make requests. Commands or requests. Now, let's take up a, a few sentences, imperative sentences. First one is shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. The second example is open the can, open the can, please write on the board, go to the market, go to the market. Now, the first sentence, the second sentence and the fourth sentences are commands. The first sentence, shut the door. The second sentence, open the can. And the fourth sentence, go to the market. More or less, they sound as commands. And the third sentence is actually a request. <coughs> the first uh, sentence is a command, shut the door. Open the can is also a command and uh, the fourth sentence, go to the market. These three sentences are commands while the third sentence, please write on the board is a type of a request. Now what happens in these sentences? Where do we find the subject? We see that all these sentences begin with verbs. Okay, Shut is a verb, open is a verb, write is a verb and go is also a verb. Uh, these type of sentences you have to remember. Don't think that these uh, sentences do not have subjects. All these sentences have subjects. What is the subject for these uh, sentences? It is actually uh, spoken to a person who stands opposite you. And so in these sentences what happens? The subject is understood. It is actually the second person pronoun you. So where does the subject actually come? It comes before the verb. Okay. You shut the door. You shut the door. You open the can. You open the can for me. You shut the door for me. That is the complete sentence. And in the in the third sentence, uh, you please write on the board. You please write on the board. And the fourth sentence again, you go to the market. So in these sentences, in imperative sentences, whether it be a command or a request, what happens is, even though the subject is not found in the surface structure, it is there deeply embedded. And in all these, most of the requests and commands, what happens? The subject is actually the second person pronoun, you. So we talked about statements. We talked about interrogatives, the two types of interrogatives, the WH question and the yes no question. 
and the third type of sentences in english are the imperative sentences which include both commands and requests and here we said that although the subject is not explicitly found when we speak or when we write it is definitely there embedded within the sentence and the subject is the second person pronoun you now the last type of sentence in english is the exclamatory sentence exclamatory it uh, it actually gives us a surprise so exclamatory sentences are more or less like declarative sentences they are just statements made but what happens here a little bit of phonetics plays here you change your intonation you ch change the manner in which you speak and you get an exclamatory sentence okay the fourth type of sentence in english is a exclamatory sentence e x c l a m a t o r y exclamatory sentence for example hooray hooray h u r r a y hooray put an exclamatory mark hooray i pass the exams without any preparation hooray i passed p a s s e d i pass the exam without any preparation without any preparation there is that expression of happiness in the way in which you speak intonation very important and another type you can also express sorrow alas alas i failed in the exam alas i failed in the exam although i prepared hard i failed in the exam although i prepared hard hard although i prepared i pre i failed in the exam although i prepared i prepared hard so these are actually as i told you these are just statements okay and here in both these cases what happens the subject is i and the verb is past in the second sentence the subject is i and the verb is failed so in these type of sentences what happens they are just statements okay so the difference lies only in the manner in which you uh, speak those sentences there is a slight change in intonation the tone in which you speak that is important so we have just discussed the four types of sentences in english and where the subjects are found in these sentences in a declarative sentence or a statement the subject comes in the beginning uh, in the initial position in wh questions the subject comes after the wh word and the helping verb in yes no questions the subject comes after the helping verb in exclamatory sentences like commands and requests what happens the subject is there but it is not found in the uh, surface structure uh, and generally it is the second person pronoun you and in exclamatory sentences which expresses surprise or astonishment what happens Mm, it is more or less like a uh, statement or a declarative sentence where the subject occurs in the initial position the only difference is the statement is made with a kind of different intonation which expresses either surprise or disappointment or whatever it is now the next thing that we are going to discuss in this session is how sentences we'll analyze different types of sentences and how they can be a simple sentence can be divided into the subject and the predicate okay before we do that what we should know is what is the function of a subject in a sentence in a sentence the subject can function as the doer it is the doer of the action he does the he or she does the action so the subject can function as a doer the subject can function as an experiencer the subject is ex the noun or the pronoun is experiencing some kind of a emotion or thought or you know action or whatever it is then a subject can also uh, express a kind of a state etc etc so there are different generally the subject is the doer of the action whatever action is conveyed by the verb is carried on by the subject okay that should be very clear for you now what we'll do is we'll uh, try to take up different simple sentences in english examples and try to divide them into the subject and the uh, predicate the first sentence roses roses are beautiful flowers so here no. roses are beautiful flowers will come roses are beautiful roses are beautiful flowers 
what happens roses is the subject are beautiful flowers are is the verb and beautiful flowers is the object i'm sorry beautiful flowers is the subject complement so roses are beautiful flowers that is the first sentence now the second sentence is the corona the corona c o r o n a the corona is spreading in all directions is spreading in all directions in all directions the corona is spreading in all directions this is the second sentence the third sentence they they yeah then the predicate is played cricket they played cricket they play cricket the fourth sentence is the manager subject the manager is instructing his teammates the manager is instructing his teammates is instructing his teammates t e a m m a t e s the fifth sentence is a hospital room a hospital room a hospital room and the predicate is should be well ventilated should be well ventilated a hospital room should be well ventilated and the last sixth sentence is the who, the girl whom we spoke to yesterday the girl whom we spoke to we spoke to yesterday we spoke to yesterday was waiting for us was waiting for us we have uh, provided these examples uh, just to show you how simple sentences can be divided into subjects and predicates now what happens one thing that you have to remember many people many people have a, a wrong idea or a misconception that uh, the subject is always made up of a single word uh, but that is not true always i like to call it a, a a subject complex it is actually a subject complex where it is not just one uh, subject word there are many helpers which actually helps the main subject this you should understand very clearly when you start writing sentences so some sentences can be made up of just one word as the subject like we see in the first sentence roses and the third sentence they but many sentences are generally made up of more subjects other than the main one the main verb which functions as the uh, subject or the doer of the action or the experiencer this you should understand very clearly now this in the first sentence what happens roses are beautiful flowers we'll have to first identify the verb when we first identify the verb what happens after that we in declarative sentences what happens the subject comes before the verb so in this first sentence what happens the verb is are and what are beautiful flowers roses are beautiful flowers so we have identified the subject as roses and uh, uh, in the second sentence what happens the subject i mean the, sorry the verb is is spreading the verb is in the present continuous form is spreading in all directions now how do you identify the subject what is spreading in all directions what is spreading in all directions the corona is spreading in all directions so what is the main subject in this sentence the main subject in this sentence is corona and corona is actually helped by the article the okay in traditional grammar it is called the article in modern grammar we call it the determiner so in this sentence what is happening the main subject or the doer is corona and corona is helped by the article the 
So the corona is the whole thing is the subject complex. The corona is spreading in all directions. In the third sentence what happens? Again we identify the verb first. What is the verb here? Played. Played is in the simple past tense form. Played cricket. Who played cricket now? You put the question who or what to the verb. The answer you get for that is your subject. Now who played cricket here? They played cricket. So in this sentence also there is only one word which is functioning as the subject and that is they. Third person plural pronoun they. They played cricket. So in the first sentence the subject is a single word roses. In the second subject, the, I mean, the second sentence, the subject is a sing, uh, corona, which has a helper, the article. In the third sentence, the subject is, it, is only a pronoun. In the fourth sentence, again, what happens? The manager is instructing his teammates. What is your verb there? Is instructing. Again, your verb is in the present continuous form, B plus ing. Now, once you get the verb, you find out what is the subject. What is your subject here? Who is instructing his teammates? The manager is instructing his teammates. Now again here, who is the agent? Who is the doer of the action? The doer of the action is the manager. Manager is the main subject. Let's call the main subject the head subject. So in the first sentence, the head subject is roses. In the second sentence, the head subject is corona. In the third sentence, the subject, uh, I mean the head subject is they. And in the fourth sentence, the head subject is manager. Manager is preceded by the, it, the, the article, the, the helper. In the fifth sentence, now again you have a subject complex. What is your verb in this uh, sentence? Should. Should be well ventilated. Now what should be well ventilated? A hospital room should be well ventilated. The, the room, we are talking about the room. So what is your head subject here? The head subject here is room. Now room has some helpers. Who are the two helpers here? One is the article uh, and the other one is hospital. A functions as the article and hospital functions as the adjective modifying the noun room. Okay, you got it clear. Now room is the subject here. It is the head subject and it has its helpers. In the sentence, what happens? There is again a verb complex. The girl whom we spoke to yesterday, the whole uh, group of words function as the subject uh, was waiting for us. Was waiting is the verb. The verb was plus main verb wait plus ing. So was waiting is in the past continuous form. Was waiting. Now how do you identify the subject? Who was waiting for us? Who was waiting for us? The girl whom we spoke to yesterday. The girl whom we spoke to yesterday was waiting for a simple sentence. And the whole complex, the group of words is functioning as the subject. Now who is the doer of the action here? It is the girl. So the girl is, I mean, I'm sorry, the girl alone is the uh, head subject and all the others are helpers. There is a helper whom we spoke to yesterday are also helpers. Whom we spoke to yesterday is actually functioning as an adjectival clause. We can call it an adjectival clause because this clause is actually talking about the noun girl. So it's an adjective. It is modifying the noun girl. And the we have already said is an article. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six helpers for the head subject girl. The girl whom we spoke to yesterday was waiting for us. Now why did we discuss all these six examples? We discussed all these six examples just to make you know that a sentence can be divided into two parts, the subject and the predicate. And the other thing that we wanted you to know is the subjects are not simple single words. Every subject complex in a sentence has, in some sentences it's only one head subject, but in many sentences what happens, it is a head subject along with the helpers, head subject along with the helpers, head subject along with the helpers head subject along with all these helpers. So these helpers, they can be adjectives, they can be articles, they can be uh, clauses, they can be phrases, but uh, they can be even infinitives. That is uh, two plus a verb also sometimes can function. They can be gerunds. So we discuss about this in later examples. And uh, uh, these examples are just given for you to show what is the subject and what is the predicate.